Hi, welcome back. I know, really quick, <laughs> two videos together. Um, so welcome, if you are a first time watcher. Welcome back, if you're returning. Um, I wanted to do something a little different. I want to see how you guys think about this. So I am a preschool teacher. And so I read a lot of, I have exposure to a lot of children's books. And so I'll still do my personal reading, but I would also, depending on how you guys think about this, try to talk about the children's books that I am reading. Um, th this may not be very many right now because school year's over. <laughs> so in the summer, um, we're about to get summer break. So there won't be a lot. Um, but if you enjoy this video, this is something I would like to start doing next year. Um, because I can't stress, stress, stress how important it is for kids to be read to. And, but a lot of parents don't really know how. So I figured this is a way for me to recommend not only some good books for you, but also a way to kind of talk about how to read them. So. The book that I'm going to be talking about, and I apologize, I don't have the hard cover. I don't have the hard copy of this one. Um, the library comes to the preschool about once a month, so this is a book that they read, and I had never read it before, but it was adorable. It's called Pirates and Penguins, okay, by Mark Agu Allegra, illustrated by Jen Harney. Sorry, is it gonna? Oh wrong way there we go okay um this is a story about a pirate who's sailing the seas and he goes and he's in the cold part antarctica right and all of a sudden this penguin slips onto his boat and this pirate thinks it's a parrot and so he's trying to get this penguin to do all these things a parrot would do, right? Like talk, he fed it a cracker, but you know what I mean? The penguin didn't like the cracker, wasn't talking because penguins don't talk, right? And so it was a cute little story because in the end, the penguin ends up getting the pirate fish, right? And the pirate's like, okay. You man, you're the weirdest parrot I've ever seen. He still doesn't know it's a penguin. He's like, but I like you. So you're staying. <laughs> um, so there are a couple things. First off, when you're reading books to kids, you want to read it multiple times. And I'm not saying like in one sitting, but like, so like in preschool, we pick a book a week. Um, so Keep in mind that when I'm suggesting things, this is not to do all at once. You could separate these things into different readings. So the first thing you want to do is when you're reading a book, ask questions. Okay. Um, the first questions, the easiest kind of questions are like yes, no questions. Um, like, you know, just any questions. Like, did the penguin fall in the boat? Yes or no? You know what I mean? Yes, no questions. Um, labeling questions, like, what is that? <gasps> what did, you know? So labeling objects, um, yeah, of the book. This one doesn't have as many things to label. I mean, there's like a ship, a pirate, a penguin, and a parrot at the very end. And the penguin, the parrot's not really even in the story. So this one doesn't have much to label. Um, and then you want to progress. The harder question will be like, well, why did the parrot try to feed the penguin a cracker? Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So you want to ask all the questions, but the easiest questions that kids are going to be able to kind of answer are yes, no questions, what questions. Um, the harder questions are like why and how, you know what I mean? Because those are a little more open-ended. You have to give a little more thought. So, but you want to ask questions throughout the book. Just labeling things, 
um, questions that retell. So, like, what did the penguin do to the cracker? You spit it out. The second thing you're going to want to do when you're reading is look at vocab to teach um, the kids. So, vocab is kind of broken up into tiers. Tier one words are just like your everyday words that kids should recognize. Right? Um, tier two are harder words that are still common and I'm trying to think of an example um, of like a tier two word oh wait let me see I think I actually wrote down some words let me see <gasps> oh um Yeah, tier two words are hard to explain, but it's just words that are still more common, like maybe, like specific animals that may not be as commonly known, but I mean, they are to adults, but like, they're not the common ones to teach dog, cat, mouse, you know what I'm saying? Um, like jaguar, kids want to know that. So that's maybe like a tier two word. Um, tier three words are like, specific to the book you're reading so I wrote down some words in this book so like in Pirates of Penguins they use expectorate that's a word good opportunity to teach a child what that means they won't know um they do say the word poop dip right <laughs> which again is more specific to like somebody who like sales might know what that is but like kids wouldn't so you just want to look for words like that um that you can teach so like and if there's like a lot i would only pick a couple to teach every time or you don't have to teach all of them you could just because it's good to like teach them and then every time you read the book oh do you remember what this word meant and go over it again um Something that I should mention that some parents might hesitate with this book. I mean, I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, but there is a picture with the pirate with his pants down and you see his boxers. Just throwing that out there. Um, I don't think it attracted from the story. So now, sorry, that's because I've done this the first time. So I just wanted to teach how generally you're going to do it. So you're going to write a book. To recap, you're going to want to read a book multiple times. You're going to want to have questions each time. The first read, I would ask the easier questions, which are like yes, no labeling questions. Then you're going to want more like where questions is like a little harder. And then the why and how questions. Okay, so that's going to the how and why would be like maybe the third time you read a book. Um, and then you're going to want to teach vocab. This one didn't have a ton to teach. Um, but like I said, just look for any vocab. Specifically to this book, what I would do is this is a great way to teach the letter P, right? Um, pirate, penguin, parrot. It's like right there for you to teach that letter. Um, kids need to learn letters. Um, that's how they read, right? So not, you know, can, you want to teach letters and sounds together. So normally when you teach a letter, uppercase, lowercase, and sound. So this is a great way to teach them what P looks like and that P says P, 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 because that's really what is going to get kids to read. They need to know the sounds of the letter so they can go K, at, cat, right? So if I was reading this book, you could really talk about the letter P. Um, the next thing you could talk about, and this would be more like of a social thing to teach but that just because the penguin wasn't a parrot didn't make him worth any less does that make sense right he couldn't do the things a parent a parrot could do right like he wasn't he couldn't talk he didn't like crackers um and obviously he couldn't fly because penguins are a flightless bird but what could the penguin do? Get fish for the pirate, right? And so the pirate's like, you're the weirdest parrot, but I like you just the way you are, right? So this would be a great book to just teaching about, okay, just because 
they don't do these specific things, there are things that they can do. And they're just as good as, the penguin is just as good as a parrot, right? You can just talk about how everybody can do different things and that's what makes everyone special is that, right? You may not be able to do what I can do, but that's okay, because you can do what you can do. And so those are kind of the two things I would focus on if you were gonna read this book, just that P, um, the letter P and the sound that it makes and then teach that just, yeah. Everyone is different and that's okay and that's what makes it good because maybe I can do it but they can, right? It's, all, it's good that we all do different things. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of it. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm only, this is the first time I really done this. So I hope this all made sense. Just when you're reading a book, make sure you're asking questions, labeling anything you can in the book that you think the kids should know, right? This book, Pirate, Penguin, Parrot, he, the pirate has a hook, a ship, right? Just label everything. You're gonna wanna, you can just ask some questions about what happened, why do you think that happened? Um, oh, and make sure I forgot when you're reading, you want to like point with your finger as you read so they can see it's from left to right. Um, and I always say who the author is and then explain that they're the ones who wrote the words and then the illustrators are the ones who drew the pictures because you want kids to notice the difference. You want them to know words are different than pictures, right? Um, you want to them to know where to start reading, which way to read, and then where to go next, which is the next line. So when I'm reading, I'm like pointing to it so that the kids can see that. Um, so the next one I do may not be as long because the basics you're gonna do the whole time, right? You're gonna be asking questions, you're gonna be reading with your finger, and then yeah, teaching that vocab. Those are the three main things you're gonna wanna do. Ask questions, teach vocab, show them how you're reading. Um, read a book multiple times. So those things are not going to change. So the next time I do this, I'm going to try to be more specific on like questions you could ask. I mean, and then, yeah. But let me know if you kind of like this. Um, I just... Reading is so important, right? Kids really need to hear like 20,000 words a day. It is so important that we are reading. And if they see you read, they're gonna wanna read. Um, so let me know if you like this. I will keep doing it if you do. Um, Cause there are so many books. I'm a preschool teacher, so I know lots of kids books. Um, so if you like this, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know if you would like seeing more of these. Um, I'm sorry this was confusing. This is my first time, like, teaching somebody how to actually read to children. <laughs> um, as always, share the video and subscribe to my channel, because why not? Um, and yeah, give it a big thumbs up. And, no, these books, I won't do a theme song, because I'm hoping to get more into, like, what questions to ask. Maybe even show myself reading the book if I ever get a hard copy. <laughs> this one was hard because yeah, it was a library book, but I do have a tub of my own children's books and then my classroom books. I could really quickly borrow, do a video of me actually reading it, if that would be better. So let me know that in the comments and yeah, we'll see you next time.